tell me about the last time you did. <laughs> now she's hard. You notice that? Tell me about the last time and she's laughing. Okay, she knows something's <laughs> coming. Tell me about the last time you did an open house. Oh my God, Ed. Okay. It was pre COVID. So pre March 19, uh, 19 2020. Yeah. Um, and I can't even really remember exactly when it was. That's how bad that is. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's a lot of agents out there that would probably be response, scratching their heads similarly on the last time they personally did an open house. Yes. And uh, it's time to revisit some of the basic tools. And that's what we're going to talk today. We're going to talk about okay, in this series, some of the fundamentals, and we're kicking it off with open houses. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. So, so let's talk about it. Um, you know, why do an open house? What do you think? Well, I, there's several, there's so many reasons to do it. So we narrowed it down to three different reasons. But I mean, there's a plethora. We could we could have a series just on open houses. But let's start with going on a deeper dive. Um, when you're at an open house, you have the opportunity to really have face-to-face -face with the consumer relaying information while you're in the house. And it, it it is true that a listing agent can always show a home better than a buyer's agent because we know more. We've had those deep conversations with the sellers or the seller's families. A lot of times they're in our own neighborhoods. So that deep dive is super important. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um, and especially the trend that we've seen as the market you know, exploded in activity are, sh mm -hmm. are shorter showing times. Yeah. It went down to 15 minutes. We're kind of settled mm -hmm. in now at a half an hour when you, when you book it, it used to be an hour that an hour was standard. Right. To have that block of time to really feel the home out and, and be able to get educated on it and know what questions you might want to ask the listing agent. Now it's yeah. like, Hey, 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. So, so there's a great opportunity to, again, to do that, to do that deeper dive. Right. Um, also in regard to a deeper dive, Joe and I, um, in the past have, we have these little, uh, easels and on the easel, we'll put things like the size of the lot or when the kitchen remodel was done or the fact the seller had always talked about putting a slider door in this room to the pool or things like that, that as the consumer buyer walks through the property, they see these little signs and it, and it sparks their imagination as they go. And I, I think that's a really cool, cool thing too, for that, that, uh, level of explanation of what's going on at the property. Yeah. Yeah. Having those signs. Um, and you also mentioned a, a video that Joe did. This is, this is interesting. Yeah. I like this idea. So t t tell, tell yes. us about that. So this, this can be done for the open house because you can actually imagine you go to an art gallery, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how you have the little headset that you listen to? <laughs> yeah. Well, Joe did this for buyer's agents. So the buyer's agent would be really up to what was going on with Peace Property when they took their buyers through. But you could do this for an open house as well. You do a very thorough walkthrough of the house. And all the buyer or the buyer's agent needs to do or the consumer when they come to the property is scan the QR. And then they can watch this video and they can walk through the house in the sequence in which the video has been done. Um, and you could do things like, hey, when you're looking out this window, this is actually a view to Point Loma, which maybe it's a hazy day and you can't even see that. But right. imagine if you knew that. Or this is Mount Helix. There's a ton of um, hidden trails all over Mount Helix. Hey, if you walk this way up this street, you could hit this hidden trail. There's just like the cool, the cool little facts that get missed. And instead of saying, Oh, isn't this a beautiful kitchen? Or isn't this cool? Or right. you have the, you have the, the real meat and potatoes of the house, which I think is kind of cool. Right. You know, and then you've got me thinking here because we have so many trails and neighborhoods that lead yeah. to places. You can say, Hey, from right here, you know, you can take this trail to the school and it links into yes. this other area. 
Yeah, right. so there's there's some great opportunities to do that. I love that idea. Joe calls that the sizzle, not the, the steak. Sell them the sizzle, <laughs> not the steak. I love it, Joe. So <laughs> the other opportunity with, with open houses, I think, is you talked about this increased exposure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you have clients who can't coordinate with their agent or cl- yeah, vice versa agents who can't coordinate with their clients to get them in in a certain amount of time. And obviously our market times are a little bit longer now, but it's still important to have the door open for the consumer to come through even without their agent so that they can have an opportunity to buy the property. Um, And I find that the agent and the client both really appreciate that opportunity. So that's, that's one reason why to do that. Yeah. Um, no, I, yep. I I agree with that as you know, we saw it kind of for a different reason in the last year where it was, hey, we have an offer deadline, you need to get in. Well, now it's an opportunity if there's a coordination issue or they've they've seen it in their and they want to come back and do a deeper dive and have that right. longer extended period of time. Exactly. Um, knocking on doors around your, your, um, listing. So a lot of times people are like, Whoa, I didn't even know that house was for sale. Right. Right. Um, and you can knock on doors and maybe they have a family member that loves living there. A lot of times people who live in the neighborhood have friends over and their friends are like, if you ever have a house in this neighborhood, come on the market, let me know. Now, granted this, people can find this information so easily now on the you know, internet, but, um, it's a great way to connect as a listing agent with the neighbors and possibly when they see that the sky isn't falling and that homes are still retaining their value and it's still a great time to sell. You can have those conversations with them. Plus people are really interested in talking about real estate anyway. They're, you're not bothering them. They actually really like it. Right. And it's, you know, again, it's a great opportunity to just say, Hey, we're going to be having an open house here on Sunday. You're going to see a lot of cars. That's what's going on. We'd love to love to have right. you come by and open yeah. that door up for that conversation so that they know right. what's going on. And then also okay. in in our area, we have a lot of, you know, neighborhood listservs where, you know, there's there are email blasts that go out. So mm-hmm. um, the homeowner can put that out and let them yeah. know that, the, that they're having an open house and that they're on the market. So, again, an opportunity to increase that exposure. Absolutely. So another thing Joe and I did at, and I'm, I'm going back to my last open house that we did together, but we actually have done taco trucks and invited all the neighbors to come to that. We've done a grilled cheese sandwich guy. We've done ice cream. We have done, I mean, we've done so many things. And if you feed people, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> And it's funny because people will be like, oh, I can't believe you're doing this. But really, people hang out a little bit longer. They have a little snack or something to eat and drink. And the, and they're appreciative of you thinking of them and their nine children that they brought for <laughs> grilled cheese sandwiches. Where did those nine children come from? I don't know. But it's that's a great idea, too. You can get super creative. Yeah. No, that, that's awesome, which, which I kind of th- I think opens the door to what we were talking about of gathering information as you go. Yes. And the importance yes. of that and how to do that. We, and we had some interesting ideas there. Go for it. Go and, and talk right. about that. So you mentioned doing a Google form on your computer or on um, an iPad or even on your phone, actually. Uh, but gathering information is not it's it's twofold. Number one, who's going through the house? Because when you have an open house, it's the general public. They they haven't been vetted. You don't know who they are. For your client's safety, for your safety as an agent who's in the property, it's really good to get people's information. You know, granted, some people don't give you their exact information, but if you're gathering information, it's important. Um, the next thing is, is that you and I did some research on a company called Emilio, which we right. haven't used yet. So, do, you know, we're not putting our name to this, but it, what it does is it tells us that there are apps out there that you can use to gather people's information that come into your open houses. And then you can use the, that information with their consent, people. You have to ask if it's okay if you communicate with them. Right. You know, on a price reduction or new homes listed in the neighborhood or anything it is that they want, take notes. Like maybe they're just really interested in knowing, 
If a house on blank street comes up for sale, well, put that in your multiple listing and, and track that. It's it's about deepening relationships. Right. And getting their feedback also on the home to, to have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, obviously their information, you have to ask for that permission. And I think that you hit on this. Um, you have to have a little bit of grace and style in it all because when you're yeah. there, you're really, you're not leading with, hey, I need your information. Uh, but, yes. but it's like you're going through and you're building some rapport and some a relationship with the client and then you're in a potential, you know, this is an open house, potential client. And then, yeah. and then getting that information. And if they have an agent, get finding out who that agent is so that you can let them know that they were there and they can follow up. Absolutely. And that just creates a deeper relationship with you and your community with agents that are there. So that's a really good, good point. Exactly. Um, one other point I want to throw in here is that uh, one of my last open houses, I had over 100 people through, and Joe and I could not manage that many people, and something ended up missing from the property, which is mm. the only time in 20 years I've ever had something like that happen. Um, but to have a, if you have too many people, it's okay to say, hey, we're going to let these 10 go through, and when one comes out, you can go in. Um, there is nothing wrong with crowd management. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like now that the market has shifted a little bit, but definitely keep that in mind. Yeah. You want to keep that in mind and you, you've got to have crowd control, um, because yes, you're right. You I mean, do. you just can't, if, if you get swamped, it doesn't serve anybody well, especially the homeowner and, and people Perhaps. have to be, respect that. And if they can't respect that, then, then they, then they shouldn't be there anyway. They shouldn't be there anyway. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, when someone is at the property and you start talking to them, there is no reason you shouldn't ask them if they need your, you to help them ask for the referral. Uh, yep. you know, you, you're building rapport with people and remember that you're there to serve them. And if they, if you genuinely can serve them, then offer your services. But a lot of agents hold open houses and never ask if that client needs help going forward. Right. So and that's a, and that's a missed sure opportunity. Make sure you do that. Yeah. It is a missed opportunity. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting with, with open houses because, you know, historically that's a, that's a tool for somebody who's more of a rookie that they're trying to kick things off and, and get some clients that way and, and get established in the business. And the more mm -hmm. seasoned you get, you tend to not do them as, as much. Um, right. And I've got, I've got a pretty good story that's pretty eye opening to like the importance of of, of doing yeah. them. Let's so, hear it. Yeah. So this was this was pre COVID. So this was I think twenty eighteen, maybe twenty nineteen. No, it's twenty nineteen. And um, I had I had a listing and I couldn't get anybody to cover the open house. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I went and I did it, and I had a lot of great traffic. And it turns out I sold three homes off of, no, I sold five homes off of that from, wow. from two different clients. Um, and then I thought about it even more in the show prep and I'm like, no, wait a second. That was their primary residences. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually, one of them turned out to be an investor and ended up buying, uh, you know, in 2021 and 2022, Another 10 homes. That's amazing. And that all came from that open house uh -huh. that I tried to yeah. give away. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yes. I, you know, I have a similar story that you just reminded me of when I first got my license. I had somebody tell me they could, I could hold their house open, but they weren't going to pay me that I would have to have the buyer pay. And I did. I found a buyer for that property and at the same time listed the neighbor's condo next door because he saw me there doing that, then ultimately sold that guy a $1.3 million, you know, a commercial building. And this was all just from doing that open house. So again, you've just reminded me, thank you. And we're trying to remind you, all of you that doing open houses, if done right, are an incredible tool for not only selling your listing, but also generating more business. A hundred percent agree. And it's funny how, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't eat your own dog food because I haven't personally <laughs> done one in a couple of years. 
And right. I'm committing to myself that this round of new listings coming on, that I'll do some of them myself. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right, mister. With that, this is our little uh, listing series. So be on the lookout for the next one in the series. And we always love your comments. We love your ideas. We love your likes and shares. So have a good one.